What does ideal strength training for runners look like? This is a great question because by this point, you know that I don't consider strength training to be cross training for runners. It's just part of the normal training process that we need if we want to reach our potential as runners. So in this video, what I'd like to do is talk about what that ideal strength training structure looks like. But first, let's talk about what it doesn't look like. Let's talk about all of the ways in which you can get strength training wrong for endurance runners. And probably the, the number one thing that distance runners usually make a mistake on is the fact that they do what I call the, the grab bag approach to strength training. And what this is, is just a complete random arbitrary approach to strength training. So maybe you'll use one of the strength routines you find on the strength running site. Maybe the standard core routine, the mace single leg routine, the ITB rehab routine, all great routines. But if you do that once a week and then you're doing a workout you found in runner's world and then you're just joining your gym general fitness class, this is not a strategic approach to distance running, uh, to strength training, and it's not gonna produce the kind of results that we really want as runners. And so let's avoid an arbitrary sort of appetizer approach. You're not sampling hors d'oeuvres at a cocktail party. We need a strategic approach to our strength training, and that's gonna make us into much stronger runners over the long term. Now, we also want to avoid lifting like other athletes. Other athletes have different demands for their sport, and they're going to lift weights in a very specific way. So, for example, we don't need to lift like bodybuilders. Get in the gym four or five days a week, do 90-minute or two-hour lifting sessions where we're isolating individual muscles, and that's just an approach that is designed for muscle growth, for hypertrophy. That's actually not what we want as runners. So we don't need to lift like bodybuilders. The other thing that we shouldn't do, and this is a bit counterintuitive, we don't wanna lift for endurance either. Now, this is a mistake I used to make all the time. I used to get in the gym and I would do three or four sets of very high rep lifts. So I would do 20 or 25 repetitions for three, four, maybe even sometimes five sets. This is an approach that is misguided because our goals in the weight room are not endurance. We get enough of that kind of a stimulus when we're out there running, when we are doing our long runs, when we're just running easy and we're doing aerobic workouts like tempo runs. So let's not lift for endurance because that misses the point entirely of why we're strength training. We are strength training, number one, for injury prevention reasons, and number two, for strength and power. We don't get that when we lift for endurance. So we don't have to do that either. Now that we know what not to do, let's talk about the ideal strength training structure for runners. Ideally, runners should be getting in the weight room twice a week for a 30 to 60 minute weightlifting session that focuses on strength and power. Now, at a very basic level, this is like three sets of eight to 10 reps, maybe six to 10 reps with relatively heavy weight. Now, we should also be focusing a bit more on power. So this is where explosive lifts like Olympic lifts and plyometrics come into play. Ideally, your weightlifting is periodized over the course of your season so that you're building more injury prevention benefits at the beginning of the season. And then when you wanna race fast during the competition and peaking phase of your training cycle, you are really dialed in on the power phases of your strength training. And so you can really get a lot out of this kind of a progression from general strength and injury prevention all the way up to the power, the explosive lifts, and the plyometrics in the final weeks of your strength training cycle. Trail running can be demanding. The technicality of the terrain, all those rocks and roots and uphill sections, downhills, the elevation changes and turns of trail running are also demanding and they require demanding gear. And that's why I'm thrilled to partner with Bombus. Use the link in the description with code STRENGTH20 to save 20% off your first order. 
If you're running trails, then you need a durable, high quality sock that has really great stitching, that is really going to protect your feet when you're out there on those technical trails. And I'm thrilled to partner with Bombas because they make exactly that, high quality socks that have excellent stitching, that also are just really attractive. And I love supporting a company that is doing such great work to help runners. They have great stitching, and what I really love about that is that you're not gonna find a lot of stitching near the toes. So if you're someone who gets a lot of blisters, especially if you're out there trail running, Bomba socks are gonna protect your feet with a very, very small stitching right near the toes on their socks. Plus, what I love about Bombas is that these might be not only the most comfortable socks you've ever worn, but the most charitable socks you've ever worn. For every single pair that you purchase, Bombas is gonna donate a pair to the needy. So it's a win-win for you, for your feet, and for communities that need that extra support. So use the code STRENGTH20 at checkout with the link in the description of this video. Save yourself 20% off with your first order at Bombas. And thank you, Bombas, for helping support our YouTube channel. Now, if you're lifting twice a week, this is a great place to be. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is sandwich your runs in between a dynamic warm up at the very beginning before you even start running, and then a 10 to 20 minute body weight strength routine or core routine after you finish running. This sandwich method is a really helpful way to not only prepare yourself for the run, but also cool down from the run. And these routines are not very difficult. 10 to 20 minutes, body weight mostly. And the real goal here is not only a warm up, not only a cool down, but mostly injury prevention. A lot of the exercises that we're gonna do in these routines are taken from the world of physical therapy. So if you've ever been hurt, if you've ever gone to a physical therapy office, a lot of these exercises are gonna seem very familiar to you. Now we're just doing them uh, for prehab rather than rehabbing a specific injury. And once we are sandwiching every run that we do, so if you're running three days a week or seven days a week, you are gonna sandwich every run that you're doing and twice a week you're gonna lift weights. You can replace the post-run strength or core routine at the end of a run twice a week with the weightlifting session. So don't think you have to do that core workout and then go to the gym and lift weights. You can just go to the gym and lift weights. And so now what we have is a brilliant strength training structure. Let's say you're running five days a week. Three days a week, you are gonna end each run with a running specific strength or core workout. And then the other two days a week that you're running, you're gonna finish that run up with a 30 to 60 minute weightlifting session where you're focused on strength and power. This is what I consider to be the ideal strength training structure for endurance runners. And then within the structure, there can be some variation. So a lot of coaches might have you do different types of warm-ups, different types of post-run strength and core work. I'm, I'm not very ideological about that. I think you can get a lot done with, you know, very different types of, of workouts. So don't think that just because I have a bunch of routines on the strength running site that these routines are the only ones that you can do. There are so many out there and they're almost all gonna be very helpful for you. What I do want to impress upon you is the fact that your weightlifting should be more strategic than the body weight work that you're doing. And that's because the body weight work is there primarily for injury prevention reasons. It's there for maintenance. Let's keep your body working well. Let's keep your body feeling good, feeling loose and supple. Let's keep those specific muscles activated that need to be activated like the glutes, for example. And when we're in the gym, on the other hand, that's where we're actually focused on real physical skills like power, for example. So we do have to be a bit more strategic about our um, weightlifting. And if you wanna learn more about that process, you can go to strengthrunning.com slash strength. You'll get our free email series on strength training for endurance runners with all kinds of stuff like mistakes to avoid, case studies, the benefits you should expect from weightlifting, which are profound for the endurance community. Uh, this is one of the big reasons why strength training is not cross training. It's part of the training we need. 
So I hope that you are thinking more strategically about adding strength training to your training. And if you need any help, always feel free to shoot me an email at support at strengthrunning.com or check out any of the resources in the video description underneath here so that you can continue on this journey of learning more about how to train properly. Because I like to say, knowledge is a competitive advantage.